Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Finn, or yet another gaming fail, and I am here again to give you one of those wonderful DCS tutorials where I kind of tell you how to do different things. So, um, to kick us off, what have we been doing so far? We've got uh, wave attack defense spawning uh, through the F10 radio menu, which is, again, very useful. Um, we've had bombing, we've had aero refueling, we've had SAM sites, we've had carriers, we've had the basics, the movement, we've had all sorts of stuff. Fantastic, great, really useful. But what else can we do? Well, we did troop transport last time, and this time we are going to do cargo transport. Again, not much different, you can imagine. But we're going to spice it up this time, you know, because last time was troop transport and they are kind of very similar things. If, you know, if, if anything, this is simpler. Um, let's phrase it how you might actually phrase an actual mission, perhaps. Let's give us the environmental factors that will make it a bit more uh, impressive. There you are, get the words out. So, let's start off. Well, what do we need? What are the ingredients? Well, let's start with the destination, right? You want to have something to drop off to. Um, so we put in a trigger on the uh, the left-hand side here. We've got, new, we've got a trigger zone. We're just going to new trigger zone, and we're going to call it drop zone, so we know where we're dropping. Uh, drop zone. Here we are. And that now is our drop zone. So this is where we're going to be deploying the cargo to. Fantastic. Well, let's go a bit further than that. Let's, why not, have, I don't know, some units waiting with, uh, you know, just waiting for some stuff to arrive. You know, there are Amazon, uh, Amazon orders for, you know, uh, crockery or something. You know, <laughs> all, all sorts. Um, so... You know, we've got all kinds of different options here. Let's add in some infantry, you know, kind of guarding the perimeter, maybe. Like, you know, they're, they're here looking out for their goods to arrive. So, you know, this is this is what it's going to be like. We'll have one guy standing off over there. Great. So we've got a drop zone. We've got the people receiving the stuff. Now, cargo transportation mission. It's kind of got to have cargo and something to do the transportation with, one might think. Um, so, let's have it, you know, for the sake of interest, um, that these guys are sending their friendly neighbourhood, uh, Huey, out to go pick up some goods. And, you know, we've used army liveries, let's go with the Bell Textron, um, kind of testing livery that they have, because I, I actually really like this livery. I know it's not all military, wee wee wee, but, like, it looks cool, I like it, let's go for it. And let's have him take off from ground hot. So he's going to start on the ground here. He's going to fly on over to where the stuff's being provided to him here. We're going to add a waypoint in. We'll set above ground level uh, and have it so that he's flying about 200 feet at 90 knots. It'll take him a couple minutes to get there. Great. So he's on his way over. He's going to come pick up some cargo. Let's have him kind of just hover over a little short here. And then when we go to static options on the left hand side, by default, for me, it's set to uh, cargoes and ammos and resupply. Let's rename it and call it ammo resupply. And then plonk it down, and there we are. There's the ammo that these guys are going to pick up. So, straight away, we've got... Um, we've got some... Uh, we've got a helicopter that's flying from out of this zone. Um, we've got a bit of cargo that he's going to come pick up. We've got some guys to drop off to, and we've got the zone that he's going to deliver it to. So that's great. So first of all, let's, on this waypoint, go to Advanced Waypoint Actions, add Perform Task, and set it to Cargo Transportation. Wow, could you have ever guessed it would be that hard? Um, so we go group, and it'll pick up the ammo resupply group, and then zone, and he'll drop in the drop zone. So great, now he knows to go and drop it off in the drop zone. Um, let's tell him to also go and uh, and land at a selected area. Like, why not just land there? Great, cool. So, now, that's nice and simple, um, but can we do anything more with that? I think we can. Um... So why not have it so that when this guy flies back, you know, I mean, this is like a real mission. 
you know, when this guy flies back, why not have him drop on a smoke marker? Well, you know, he's already in the zone, so have it triggering when he's in the zone, that's a bit interesting. So let's have it so that it switches once he's left the zone at least once. So leave zone is the trigger we're going to create just over here on the left hand side in the triggers section. We're going to click leave zone conditions and we're going to say uh, all of group out of zone and it's going to be um, we're going to set the rotary guy and we're going to be out of the drop zone and then he's going to say flag on. So this will turn on flag number one. So by him leaving the zone, it tells us that, oh, he's left. He's gone now. He's gone to go pick up that stuff. Great. Cool. New one. Let's do entering zone. Now, this one, we want to make sure that he can. we can only trigger the smoke going off when he's re-entering the zone after having left. So the way that we check that is we go uh, part of coalition in zone, uh, or part of group in zone, sorry, and we'll set it to be the helicopter, rotary one, and we'll set it to drop zone. But at the moment, that just checks to see if that group is in the zone. Well, obviously, when he spawns in, he'll be in the zone by default. So if you add in two conditions next to each other like this, one on top of the other, it will make sure it checks for both before it actually performs the action. And what are we going to do? Well, we'll just say flag is true one. So if flag is on in this case, then flag will be true. So obviously if he's left the zone, the flag will be true. And if he's re-entered the zone, then that statement will be true. And then it can perform the action, which in this case is going to be a smoke marker. Uh, let's have a look, smoke marker, here we are, uh, on, let's set it to blue on the drop zone, great. So now he's got a smoke marker, there he'll come in and he'll do that. And let's just have them say thank you as well. So conditions, you've also got a condition here for cargo unhooked in zone. That's a nice simple one, isn't it really, is um, if the cargo ammo resupply has been dropped into the drop zone, do an action. And the action in this case will be message to all, and it'll just be thank you, exclamation marks. So, you know, quite simply what we've got is a guy spawns, he flies over and picks up the cargo. Upon him flying back, and only upon him flying back, not upon him spawning, but only upon him re-entering the zone from his initial flight, it will trigger a smoke marker to tell him exactly where to put the cargo. He will then drop the cargo, and once the cargo has been released, the uh, friendly AI infantry will turn around and say thank you very much, and then he'll go in and land, and that will be that, the end of the mission. So let's put that to the test, shall we? Um, so we hit start. Uh, inevitably, we'll have the really loud noise of the helicopter when we spawn in, um, so we'll have that to contend with. And we hit fly, here we are, and he takes off. You can see the guys that he's going to drop the cargo to. You can see he's turned and he's going to fly over there. So let's hit the uh, the time warp shall we stick it over to 20 so that we've got plenty of time for him to fly right on over to uh, to where he's going to be going to so he's gonna cross a few uh, streets and houses and he comes upon an airfield where he's gonna uh, pick up this cargo which I believe actually I might have set to be uh, have I set that correctly Yes, I have. So, somewhere over here. Here it is. Here's the cargo. He's going to dip down onto it. Pick it up. Going to fly up. Going to turn around. And he's going to bugger off back to where he came. And now, we're going to have to do a bit of warping. He may crash into something because time warp in this uh, is not amazing, can be pretty dangerous, can get the AI to do all sorts of things that they shouldn't do. Uh, but let's just keep going here and look out for a marker on the horizon. So as he starts to pass over the next few bits of towns and city, are we going to see a marker on the horizon? Here we are. There it is, right there, off to our left. 
So uh, I think he can drop it anywhere in the zone. Yeah, he can. So there you are. And then I believe he got the thank you as well. So uh, because we made that zone quite massive, he did technically succeed. But that's how to get it to work. Um, if we gave him a smaller zone to deliver to, which in fact, you know, let's let's do that. Let's uh, let's make that zone to be like I don't know, a thousand. Uh, make it make it ten thousand. No, let's make it a thousand. Why not? If we made it ten thousand, then he would drop more accurately into the area. But as you can see, the zone is just the area where he will drop the goods. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, pinpoint exactly in the middle. It can be anywhere. So again, let's just. Uh, Stickers to a 70 times warp, and uh, he'll be over at the airfield. Lickety split. Here we are. He's arrived at the airfield. He's picking up his cargo. He's flying back. Fully prepared for this guy to crash into something on the way back here now. Um, you could say he's taken a slightly different trajectory. And here we go. Slide it back down again a little bit, and here he comes. Once he gets in, he'll trigger that smoke, I can imagine. There you are. And he makes the deployment. So it hits the ground and he drops it. And then they say thank you up in the top right. Fantastic. So we've just set up a mission there. You know, no longer are we talking about one little basic skill, we're talking about an actual practical mission. Something that this guy um, you know, can go and do a mission and come back and he's fully performed a task. Uh, you know, obviously embarking units and transport, you know, building a SAM site, etc. It, it can all be, you know, useful and practical, but what we've just done is essentially demonstrate how you can um, integrate the skill of moving cargo into a mission. You're no longer limited by what I've displayed to you. Uh, so I hope that's been useful. I hope that you can put that to the test in um, a mission of your own. I hope that you can apply that to something. And please, if you do, let me know in the comments. Let me know exactly what it is that you had it do. Or, you know, even better, you know, link us to a Reddit or a forum post where you've uploaded your mission file for other people to try or the DCS user files or something like that. You know, give us an opportunity to test it out. You know, this is an open forum. I really want to share these skills with with different people and really see what the DCS community can come up with. So um, I just want to thank you all very much for your time. I hope you have a wonderful, uh, wonderful day, you know, morning, noon, night, breakfast, lunch, dinner, wherever it is you are. And um, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.